Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're talking about Oumuamua, the object we've talked about previously that was discovered back in late 2017 that was an unusual visitor from another star system. Now this right here is probably the most realistic representation of Oumuamua and today we're going to be talking about the recent discovery of where it may have actually come from. Welcome to What The Math. So there's actually a lot of things we've learned about Oumuamua since the first discovery. And um, one of those things is that it's super long, it spins really fast. But the coolest uh, part about it, at least in my opinion, is that it also seemed to have been accelerating at some point uh, near the sun. This obviously created a lot of speculation amongst the alien believers, thinking that this was an alien spacecraft. Of course, they didn't really read the uh, small font of that announcement in that the actual acceleration was super, super, super tiny. Like, it was barely even detectable. And this acceleration was created by the expulsion of various gases on the surface of Oumuamua from being so close to the sun. And because of this acceleration, its actual trajectory changed just a little bit. So it was very difficult uh, for scientists to kind of predict uh, where it's going. Um, and I guess in some sense where it came from. But uh, in the last few months, uh, several studies actually were able to calculate relatively precisely how much its trajectory changed and were able to kind of pinpoint the direction from which it came. Now today we're going to be discussing these discoveries using the Space Engine and we're also going to um, maybe even recreate some of the uh, trajectory here uh, as it approached the Sun and as it moved away from the Sun because we can actually do that in Space Engine pretty easily. And so first let's actually see how the trajectory changed um, in the last year or so since we discovered it. Um, so here this is September uh, of 2017 and we're going to advance this. Uh, to September of 2018. So let's just advance time here. We're going to make it move relatively fast. As you can see, it's moving across the skies pretty quickly. And basically, the trajectory here is going to be changing quite a lot. So this is October of 2017. And now we're going to be going into November and December. And you can actually even see the planets move around the sun. But basically, this is how fast it's moving across the actual solar system. And at this point, it's moving away from our solar system. And basically, right around here, this is present time. And so, um, it's going to be moving away from the sun for pretty much the rest of its journey. And you can even advance this uh, quite a lot, as a matter of fact. You can move... Um, this up to about 99,000 years from now to see how far away it's going to be at this particular period of time. But anyway, so what are we talking about? So what do we actually discover? And so the study that I wanted to mention uh, did something really, really cool. First of all, they took a look at the uh, database of various stars uh, in the region where it came from. And they discovered there's approximately 7 million objects uh, whose uh, de detailed parameters were actually know pretty well. And so they were able to use uh, those details from those particular stars to, uh, well, essentially uh, try to see how close Oumuamua came to them or approached them um, in a specific period when it was there. So they did a lot of math, obviously, but with a computer um, and uh, using various, very, very specific parameters from the database, which actually is called uh, Gaia DR2 database, um, they were able to very accurately uh, discover which stars it was very close to and which stars it was far away from and also at what speed it was actually passing uh, by those stars. Uh, which indicated that it may have come from those stars or it may have come from some different region. Now, there's a few things we need to consider here. First of all, how did Oumuamua even get essentially kicked out of its uh, parent star system? The two prevalent theories right now is that either it was around a binary star that uh, made it essentially escape because of the binary star interaction, and this happens very often, 
or it was a very massive planet in the star system that kicked it out um, and gave it enough speed to basically escape. The second theory, the, the planet theory, is not as likely because it's more rare. But that also means that we need to try to see if we can find a binary star in that database. And so um, they did quite a lot of analysis and they did quite a lot of uh, basically calculations. They had a lot of graphs and I'm going to show you some of them. And some of these graphs uh, focused on the encounter time, on the velocity itself, or basically had a composite of all of these parameters showing you some of the more likely candidates uh, for the essentially the origin of Oumuamua. Now, what they discovered were, well, essentially four stars, uh, four more likely origins of Oumuamua. Unfortunately, none of those stars is binary, though. But this doesn't uh, exclude actual planets. Two of these stars, known as Home 3 and Home 4, seem to have very different names um, and not a lot of information about them. So they didn't really provide any specific parameters for them. But these two stars are actually well studied, unfortunately don't have any planets around them yet. We haven't discovered any. But this star right here, Hipparchos 3757, which unfortunately I don't have in Space Engine to show you, um, because it's not really that well studied just yet, um, was a very close candidate. The, the passage here was at a distance of about just around two light years, um, specifically about half a parsec. And the star itself is a uh, type of a red dwarf, so it most likely has quite a lot of planets, but those planets might be very similar to Earth. So in that sense, uh, this particular star is similar to our neighbor Proxima Centauri. So it probably looks something like this, and it might have a planet uh, around it very similar to uh, Proxima Centauri B that's right here. And here, the only problem with this particular star is that the actual passage of Oumuamua was at a speed of about 25 kilometers per second. So, if it did escape from this particular star, um, it may have been actually moving really fast before, which is, once again, really difficult to explain. A more likely candidate is actually this right here, uh, HD292249. Uh, this is an object that's actually kind of similar to our own sun, uh, it's a G-type star, G5 type, and uh, the passage here was a little bit farther away at about 4 light years, um, but the actual speed was only about 10 kilometers per second, which is kind of the escape velocity. Um, and so, right now, this is the biggest candidate, not the sun, but the star known as HD292249. Uh, unfortunately, none of these stars really explain it that well. As a matter of fact, because we haven't really discovered any planets around the stars and because we don't really know how Oumuamua escaped its original uh, star system, um, it's very difficult for us to explain and to try to understand where it really came from. But at the moment, this is the best candidate. However, in about two to three years from now, Guy is actually going to release a new database with even more stars and even more accurate measurements, which will allow us to very likely predict almost exactly where Oumuamua actually came from. And what's even more interesting is that we're going to be able to do this for pretty much any object. And this is why this study is so important, because we now have a technique and a way for us to predict where these objects came from and where they're going as well. And uh, this analysis and this technique will allow us to create this really interesting 3D map of various objects traveling through space, uh, not just to more, but basically everything else in space as well. For now, though, what we can do, I guess, is maybe try to um, discover more objects like Oumuamua just to see if we can maybe find better techniques. And maybe even one day, uh, create some kind of a mission to land on this object and to explore it in a little bit more detail. For now though, let's watch it fly away from our star, the sun, and basically get darker and darker and darker. In about a few thousand years, it's actually going to escape our own uh, solar system and become an interstellar object once again. And anyway, on this note, I wanted to basically finish this here, and once we have more information, more news about Oumuamua, we'll talk about it once again. It's a really cool object, and definitely one of the most unusual discoveries of 2017. Thank you so much for watching, and hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if you did, don't forget to subscribe, and maybe even click that bell button to be notified about future videos. And maybe even consider supporting the channel on Patreon, because it does help me a lot. I'll see you guys tomorrow, thank you so much, space out, and as always, bye-bye.